Oh yeah, it's wood. This is pure timber. Q Kesha song. Is that royalty free? Can we afford that? Hey Forum, Manny back here with another video and I'm back with Lily again. Hi. And we're here to do some of our fall fragrances, or my fall fragrances rather. And this is a mix between niche and designer ones. And I'm really interested to hear what Lily has to say about them, considering I'm going to be wearing the majority of these throughout the next few months. So, you ready for this? Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to start off with this guy right here. So there you go. Ooh, it's spicy. Like it. Is that more for a night out? Is that more for a man, a woman? What's going on there? It's not daytime. It's giving me spice bomb vibes, you know, my trusty spice bomb. But I would say on the whole it's more masculine than it is feminine. Ooh, but it's good. I oh, like it. Okay, alrighty. And you said more nighttime vibes, so we're talking like pub, lounge, mm -hmm. club. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? Yep, all of the above. Okay, out of ten. Eight. Okay. All right, so the one we're speaking of is this guy right here. Now, of course, it's by Mugler, which you know. Mm -hmm. It kind of dries down into a masculine gourmand, reminiscent of the initial Amen. But this takes a more boozy effect. That's why it's called pure malt. So there are elements of this that are supposed to smell somewhat like scotch or something like that. That being said, it's not that boozy off my skin. It's just bloody sweet and awesome for the night out. Uh, what do you think of this presentation? Um. <laughs> So I like the soft touch, but actually we can see that you must have had this for at least a little while, or at least you've handled it quite a bit because it shows every single fingerprint, um, which kind of makes it look a little bit cheap, honestly. Um, and I'm sure that this wasn't cheap to buy. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit disappointing in the look, but I do like the star. Now it is kind of cool though, just because you can just like throw in your bag and like probably not going to break. And I think that's good. But since this thing is also covered in rubber at the top. I know some people who know this brand would know this. Like this thing is next to impossible to get a proper spray out of, so. It sounds odd too. Yeah, at least what counts the most inside smells pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, pure malt. All right, moving on to the next one. There you are. Mm, okay, this is um, definitely masculine. I don't know if these are all men's fragrances. This is giving me, um, I don't even know if I've said this on this channel before, but it smells a lot like the incense that if you've ever been to a Catholic church on a holiday, um, it smells like incense to me, which is a good smell for me. It might not be a good smell for everybody, but I like it. It's definitely masculine. It's strong. It's definitely assertive for sure. Okay. Is that more for someone like that's dressed casually, smart casually, just lean, formal? Um, this is not a casual fragrance, I would say. It's definitely smart casual, too formal, too, you know, black tie, white tie, whatever. Definitely more evening. It smells good though, I really like it. And out of 10? I gave the last one an eight, and I think I like this better, so I'll give it an eight and a half. Hey, okay. Mm -hmm. So the one we're talking about is by Raja Papa. It's called A Midsummer Dream. And it's interesting that you really like this one a lot. And I think you either gave this the same score my friend Alex did from Ottawa. But it's weird because this stuff is not necessarily known as a compliment getter, but it's always done me justice in that regard. Say if I have more dressed up occasion to smell nice for or this nice for. The notes here are very much more upscale. It has benzoin in it, which is a more intoxicating take on something. Thing that's supposed to be kind of like vanilla also has elmi in it which is a resin that comes from a filipino tree actually mm -hmm. and the cordiforms with some of the sweeter intoxicating notes almost smells like an enchanted forest some mm. people say okay so when you said the name of it it's midsummer night's dream is that it it's in you know allusion to that yeah okay i don't think it smells summery however i think a midsummer dream is not necessarily summer it's supposed to be magic it's supposed to be ethereal and enchanting yeah and so knowing that for me this smells very much like catholic church incense i think it makes sense it's intuitive cool it's not necessarily one that just screams summer to me as far as the inspiration as well maybe if you are familiar with uh, shakespeare and or just english lit in general like you would think oh okay it's something more of a romantic inspiration rather than a summery one yeah that being said it speaks for itself so shout out to raja for this one mm -hmm. eight and a half really okay okay all right moving on to the next one there you go 
this is really nice too. This is similar to the last two that I think you gave me, but it's pulling sweeter. Um, so for that reason, I think it could be a little bit closer to the feminine and I, I do, yeah, it's closer to that balance point. I do agree. It's good. Yeah, it's nice. Okay. And is that more of an everyday? Is it more of a casual, formal? Do you have to dress a certain way to pull something like that off? I think a man could definitely wear this as his daily fragrance, just, you know, whatever, getting out of the shower, heading out, whatever he may be doing. Um, yeah, it's good. Super lovely. Okay. And out of 10. Hmm. I gave the last one eight and a half, and I think I might like this one better, but I don't want to go all the way to nine, so I'll say eight and a half again. Okay, so the one we're talking about is by Chopin. This is called Musk Malaki. Now you are familiar with the previously featured Malaki fragrance and Amber Malaki on this channel. The Musk version carries that same sense of power just because it kind of jumps off of your skin, but not in the way Amber jumps further more off of your skin. This stuff is more of a subdued take on Musk, but it still feels like you're going to be noticed with it. Now it is going to lean a little sweeter because there are sweeter notes there too. Also rather fresh because usually when I think of musk, I think of something that smells more like your skin, if that makes any yeah. sense. This stuff right here though, I definitely could envision just spamming after I get out of the shower. Mm -hmm. But you really like it. I do, yeah, it's good. I like the, this is like kind of a silly thing to appreciate, but I like the color of the actual perfume itself. It's kind of like a little bit purple, um, which I feel like is unusual. So yeah. I like that. And yeah, I would definitely agree too, just because if you're looking at the juice here, despite it being called musk, I just feel like with that cleaner looking purple mm -hmm. gray vibe, it's also indicative of a certain accessible freshness. Yeah. So I think it's very telling. And then of course, Chopin's presentation is just really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like a watch, so mm -hmm. you gotta love it. Next up, moving on. There you go. Okay, I don't like it. Mm. It's been a long time since I haven't liked something on this channel. It smells like the worst parts of a bonfire. I don't even really know what is going on here, but I'm not a fan. Holy wow. Oh no. No, no, it's cool. No, I, I mean, I'm not triggered, but I see why you'd say that. But I was also at the same time kind of surprised you did. But with that being said, like, despite your disdain for it, like, who would rock this? Or could you see someone you know rocking this or maybe a certain archetype of person? Like, I've never smelled anything like this before, which maybe some people would think is a positive. I guess the type of person who wants to smell like nobody or nothing else. <laughs> but that's about the extent of what I can say about this. And out of 10. Like the smells themselves aren't bad, but I just don't get this as a fragrance that you'd want to put on your body. From that perspective, as a fragrance, like a three, I think that's the lowest I've ever given anything on this channel. Yo, that's lower than Santal 33 two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yikes. All right. So the one we're talking about is by Guerlain. It's called Louis. And this fragrance right here is characterized by a carnation. And that's like a spicy floral. It's going to kind of hit your nose and feel like something's popping in a warm, spicy, yet somewhat florally background sort of way. There's also a lot of benzoin in there too. So also again, an intoxicating take on vanilla that kind of leans smokier in this regard. It almost smells more like just a lot of aspects of darker fragrances, but in a way I think is wearable in a more vintage way. That also smells kind of modern at the same time, but is it polarizing? Hell yeah. Evidently. Um, I took a couple years of Italian in high school, and so I know this is the like masculine singular article, so he or him. Um, so I know this is a masculine fragrance, but I just can't wrap my head around it. I think this is like super domineering, assertive, almost like it could have been by Tom Ford if it smelled less appealing. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely less appealing. It's a very gentle way of putting it. Yikes, my guy. Sorry for anybody who owns this fragrance. No offense. Well, you don't count. Sorry for anybody whose go-to fragrance this is, or signature fragrance. Hey man, if you're on that shit, yo, I rate it. But apparently she doesn't, so four out of 10. Three. Three out of Three. 10. Three. Don't be giving it an extra point. It did not deserve it. I tried. It didn't earn it. Shout out to Thierry Vosser. Moving on. Hopefully it's better than the last one. Okay, this is better. It's definitely give me, giving me wood. It's giving me Home Depot, but in the best possible way. Oh yeah, it's wood. This is pure timber. 
Q Kesha song. Is that royalty free? Can we afford that? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> Not remotely. How many bars can I sing? No, this is really good. Yeah, I like this. Okay, cool. Is that more feminine, masculine? What's going on there? This is more masculine, I think, as far as I'm concerned. I think this could be a daily wear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Out of 10. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I like it as much as the other one, so I'll say an eight. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's more than double the last one. <laughs> So the one we are talking about is by Lalique. It's called Encre Noir. That means black ink, of course. And actually what's happening here is that the woods here are supposed to smell kind of reminiscent to black ink in a really dark way. So if you smell that fragrance, it also has cypress. And the accord that it smells like overall leans darker. That being said, I do get more straight up woody accords than something that leans synthetically black, if that makes any sense. Um, I will point out that the... Yeah. The cap of this is wood grain, so I think I nailed that on the head, literally and figuratively. And I also do think this is the first fragrance by this brand that I've ever smelled on this channel. Yeah, Lalique Bangs, they make awesome glassware. That's what they're known for. And back in the day, when they were doing glassware for other perfume brands, they were just like, man, we keep making these perfume bottles for these guys. We should just make our own. And I mean, this is a very substantial bottle. Like, This is another one that you could hurt somebody badly with. Yeah. Uh, but this isn't probably not something you want to travel with because it's going to get you over your 50 pound limit. Yeah, this right here feels like a pound min right now. <laughs> yeah. That being said, you do rate it. Yeah, it's good. For me, again, more of an everyday for man kind of scent. Yeah. It's more like a night out kind of vetiver at the same time because usually there are woody fragrances that kind of lean more office-like. I think this one has a little bit more attitude. But could you still wear it in office? I would. Yeah, I think a man could. So in closing, we have a couple winners here. Tied for first place at eight and a half each, we have a Midsummer Dream by Raja Parfum and Chopin's Musk Malaki. So we have a designer and a niche that are both hogging the top spot here. But I think you said that you kind of lean towards this direction more. I like this one better. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, I can't wait to make my sheets smell like this tonight by going to bed with this. And hey, if it makes you feel any better, this uh, Chopin stuff, you can actually find at a rather approachable level, less than a lot of some of the most premiered designer fragrances that you already know of. So if you're looking for good value on the designer level, that also smells incredible. Definitely check out Chopin's Malaki line. This is twice in a row now that you've given them the top spot. Yeah, that's right. Wow. All <laughs> right. Shout outs to Geneva. But... With that being said, thank you for your time as always. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you, Lily, for doing this. Mm -hmm. And if you guys want to see her back on the channel, let us know in the comments and give this video a like if so as well. On top of that, subscribe if you've yet to. And if you really want to, also hit the notification bell as hard as you can. Do you have anything else you want to say? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. Until next time, thank you again. Take care. Peace out. Bye. Wear your fragrances.